I'm Eric Turnberg, Editor-in-Chief of CBS Money Watch. With this installment of Minds Over Money, I'm joined by David Lapson, Professor of Economics at Harvard University. David, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, there are a number of mistakes that everybody makes when they invest. It's just a difficult thing to do emotionally and intellectually, so let's talk about them. For example, right now, I feel a little bit like the market's been going down. I ought to get the heck out of stocks. It's scary. Bonds have been doing a lot better. Maybe I should get into bonds. What mistake am I making there? So that's return chasing, some kind of extrapolation mistake, believing that what's happened in the recent past is going to repeat itself in the future. And the small investor should basically not, should resist the temptation to try to follow the trend. It doesn't work. The sophisticated investors have complicated strategies to exploit stuff like that. For the small investor, they're mostly just going to generate a lot of heartburn and a lot of fees if they try to trade off of these trends. All right, all right. So you just have to turn off that just worry. Just your hands. <laughs> Don't right. even try. There's another mistake that you've mentioned in some of your papers, which is fascinating. It's called, you call it narrow framing. What's it mean? So narrow framing is the idea that people don't look at their portfolio as a whole, but instead look asset by asset by asset. And here's how you can make a huge mistake. Imagine that you're retiring and you've got your 401k. Let's say you've got $300,000 in the 401k. And you say, I don't want risk. I'm going to put all of that money, say, into bonds. But then you have to remember that you already have a lot of other bond-like investments in your portfolio. What do you have? You have Social Security. And for a typical household, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. You have a home, which is also bond-like, paying the dividend of your rent every month for you. That's a bond or bond-like. You may have some additional years of earning. That's a bond-like, your paycheck coming in. So in fact, you may even have a defined benefit pension, maybe a small one. That's a bond, clearly. Uh -huh. So you look at a household that's retiring or near retirement, and they've got all these bond-like assets. Their DB pension, the Social Security benefit, their home, maybe a few years of labor income. The only thing that could hold equities is the 401k plan. So now I think to myself, suppose I want just 10% of my portfolio, of my total household portfolio, uh -huh. to be in equities. That might require that I put all of my 401k in equities to get up to 10% of the total. People don't think that way. They look at the 401k alone, put 10% of that in equities, which means that across the total portfolio, including all these assets, they've got almost nothing in equities, and that's too little. That's too little. It exposes you to inflation over the rest of your life. You and inf inflation, and then you're not diversified as well, more generally. Equities are part of the portfolio. Maybe not a big part for someone who's retiring, but definitely a part. And don't let this narrow framing bias lead you to hold too few equities. OK. Um, another one that seems strikingly common, fee ignorance. Yeah. What is that? So Americans don't know the fees that they're paying. A lot of them, when asked, say, I'm not paying any fee in my mutual fund. Because the fee isn't listed on the quarterly report, they think there is no fee. Uh, even some of the people on the phone, when you call these companies, will tell you there's no fee. <laughs> because they're not well trained either. Uh, turns out, fees matter. Fees are one of the most, probably the predictable piece of return in a mutual fund. It's very hard to know from year to year what return you'll get beyond the fee. The fee is the predictable bit. So we should be very focused on the fees that we're paying, and we should push very hard on that dimension. There are low-fee funds. There are high-fee funds. If you're unaware of the fees you're paying, become aware. And once you become aware, ask whether you're getting value for that 100 basis point mutual fund. There are other mutual funds, passive funds, for example, that are going to charge you 20 or even 10 basis points. All right, good. So you should always assume that no one's doing this for charity. <laughs> Some of your money is coming out to pay for the salesman and for the and management. And it matters. The and fees vary across these uh, different asset managers and across even within an asset manager, across the funds. Yes, especially over time. Yeah. David, thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for watching.